Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. Today we're looking at the Faber-Castell Loom. Now this pen is not a new pen on the market. Uh, it's been around for ages and um, I featured it in a number of videos uh, but realized I hadn't done a video that I've been meaning to do for quite a while. Uh, and that is like an overview of the pen model uh, but also uh, a comparison of the nibs that are sort of standard run available for this pen. So that's extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. But first things first, let's talk about the pen model and then we can look at a few of the uh, the nib options. Okay, so the top of the pen is flat and has just the little uh, Faber-Castell logo on it, in, built into this sort of hinged clip, plastic cap, uh, and then snap cap, good secure snap, uh, cylindrical metal body. There's a couple of different finishes, a, a shiny metallic and a matte metallic. Uh, and then this little dimpled end cap there, which uh, is a, a nice little feature I find. So the cl clip is chrome uh, finished, as is the little end of the cap band there. So it snaps to cap. Um, decent sort of liner in this. Uh, can't really see it, but it's got a nice liner. And then this sort of plastic uh, ribbed section once again there's a couple of different versions materials that this comes in you unscrew the uh, barrel of the pen to reveal the converter i'm almost out of ink on this one um and standard international converter not all converter converters will fit um uh, and unfortunately one isn't provided with the pen when you buy it uh, but it does take standard international cartridges as well plastic feed and uh this sort of small nib um, which is branded with the Faber-Castell and the uh, nice little uh, dimples on there, uh, which you can sort of see there. It's got an M and the, I think the logo underneath that. It's got a bit of ink on it, so it's hard to see. Um, there's no breather hole on this nib. It's just a, a very fine slit. Um, but these nibs are really, really wonderful. So a couple of things about the pen. Firstly, um, it's a small pen, like uncapped, oh, cap, sorry, it is quite small. Uh, just for the sake of comparison, here it is alongside a Lamy Safari. Um, but when this pen is posted, it actually is a really comfortable pen. It posts very well and becomes a really nice length. Uh, a lot of people have an issue with this grip section. I don't. It is, some people consider it slick, and the metal version is slicker than this plastic version, but these little ribs uh, do provide a little bit of traction for your fingers, but the shape being tapered without any like little flare or anything, people do find that it becomes a little bit slippery, particularly uh, you know after a long writing period. And I forgot to mention, as you would have seen, that the uh, Faber-Castell logo and everything is there um, since 1761. Uh, they're sort of embossed in the plastic of the clip, of the cap. It's a nice sort of matte plastic as well. I quite like this design. There are a number of different options in terms of colours, and I said there's a couple of different materials available for the barrel as well. Uh, so the cost of this pen is interesting. I looked at two retailers, one in the United States and one in Australia, and uh, both came out at $55. Now, that's 55 American through the uh, US retailer or 55 Australian through the Australian retailer. So it's not a super cheap pen, but it is also still in that uh, entry level range. Um, a little bit more expensive than say a Lamy Safari, but you know, in comparison to say a Twisby Eco uh, here in Australia. Um, the dimensions of this pen are interesting. So capped, it's 129 millimeters. Uncapped, it's 121. And that will be okay for some, for most people probably. It's a little bit on the small side, I think. Um, and then posted, it's 151, I think. There we go, yeah. Um, which is a good length. As I said, the cap sits nicely on the webbing of the hands and it fits well. Um, it's not a huge nib, but like it does give you a bit of range there. The diameter is about 11 millimeters in the middle, so it's quite comfortable. The weight of the pen is 36 grams with a converter and ink and all of that. Uh, 28 of that is in the body of the pen, so it's a good hefty body uh, and eight in the cap very light cap but that is for this model the weight is different for the uh, gun metal version that came out a few years ago um, and you can watch the review of that on my channel where i talk about the weight and in comparison to this pen um, 
As I said, there are a number of different options. I'll show you what I have in my collection. Uh, some of these are sort of more, I'm not sure these are all the original combinations. I do tend to change things around, but there's like, you know, an olive uh, version of the cap with the metallic. There's orange. This is the uh, gun metal version. And then the uh, purple and there's like a silver a gray I think there's still there used to be a white and a black and things like that so you can see there's a lot of variation across uh, the model uh, and I've got four different nibs and these are both mediums extra fine fine mediums and a broad um, let's quickly talk pros and cons before I show you the nibs so cons for this pen is one of them is the grip people do not like this grip section they find it slippery and the shape just to be less than ergonomic i don't mind it personally but if you're going to think about getting this pen just take into consideration it does have a texture those are like ribs on the on the on the uh, section there uh, and it can be slippery and one of these i can't remember which one it is nope. must be this one there has a metal section and these are these metal fin these you know metallic metal finishes are i think they're called a piano finish or something like that are fingerprint magnets like you are just going to pick up stuff everywhere with those another thing is that the design of this pen is not going to be for everyone it's not a sort of nice sort of you know um you know tapered ends and you know rounded tops and all those sorts of things it is sort of a more unique design i really like it um and a lot of people do uh but it's it's certainly not going to be for everyone i suppose in the same way that alami safari isn't going to be for everyone in terms of design either um it is also a small pen as i said like it's small in the hand it's got a good uh, girth but the length is short capped it's much better but it's not a big pen at all the other issue is of course the fact that this pen does not come with a converter this is a you know 55 dollar american pen at that price, it should come with a converter. You shouldn't have to spend the extra uh, $10 or so to get one. Um, I know that in Germany, where Faber-Castell is based, cartridges are the predominant uh, form of, um, you know, ink for your pen. Um, but I don't see why a converter shouldn't be included with a pen like this at this price point, seeing as though they can be included in, in pens at a much lower price point a cartridge is converted uh, provided with the pen and the packaging in the pen is lovely but a, a converter would be really great now pros the price is a pro the way these pens write is sublime the nibs are smooth quite wet beautifully tuned and for that price you're getting a really really great writing pen the other thing that is nice about these pens is the range of colors that are available. So this is just a selection of a few. These are what I have in my personal collection. Um, you know, there are many, many others, or well, several others around. I think there was also like a lime green at one point, like really great variety of colors and finishes and different sorts of gunmetal combinations and silvers and grays and things like that. Um, so yeah, I really think this is a really lovely pen. It's been in my collection for quite a while now. I love it. I use them all the time, particularly this uh, medium here, the blue one. Beautiful, wet, broad medium. Um, and I just think they're really great value. I think they're a nice pen. They feel nice in my hand. I like them a lot. Uh, and they've been on like top five lists and things for me for quite a while. Um, so the other thing I wanted to do today, of course, was show the nib options. So as I said, I have extra fine, fine, medium. This is the new one that comes on the gun metal pen. I've got an old medium here on the blue uh, and then a broad. Now, as you can see, they are fairly wet. All these are inked with Lamy black. Uh, so they're all the same ink. They're all the same, you know, sort of done on the same paper, done on the same day, everything. So if we have a, a nice sort of close look there, uh, you can see the X, they are all fairly wet and laid on a no lovely, nice sort of line. They're rigid nibs. You're not going to get line variation out of this, out of these, but they are smooth. They're fairly wet. And they lay down, a, as I said, a lovely line of ink. One thing I wanted to do was just to give you a comparison or an idea as to what the uh, line width is. This is five mil um, grid paper from Rhodia. And this is a ruler with millimeter markings. Um, just so you can see, you know, there is a quite a, a nice sort of um, variation. The extra fine to the fine is not a huge step up. And that second medium, the, the gun metal one, which is the newer model, is a much finer medium than the medium I have on my blue, which you will see in a minute. 
And then the broad is a lovely broad uh, nib there. You are putting down a lovely line of ink with that pen. So let's see them uh, in action while we're here. Let's start with the extra fine. So we have extra fine. So you can see it is a very nice fine line. Smooth. Fairly wet. Um, but yeah, a lovely consistent. These are also very consistent pens. They will write first time every time, which is a real joy. Um, I'm very, very, very uh, happy with this extra fine. It's actually one of my favorite extra fines in my um, you know, collection. So I'm quite happy with that indeed. Then we have the fine. Oh, that's not the fine. That would be the broad. <laughs> um, there we go, that's the fine. I think I got those mixed up before. So we have fine. Not a huge um, difference there in terms of the extra fine to the fine as we saw earlier. Um, noticeable, like you can see a difference in the line width, uh, but not super, super different. Um, also not a super wet uh, difference in sort of the wetness of the pen. They write quite similarly, but you know, I think they're quite sort of nice, good, fine writing pens. Then we come uh, to the two medium nibs that I have. So as I said, I've had this one for a few years. Um, it's got a beautiful, broad, wet medium nib on it. And this is the gunmetal version. It's a much lighter pen model. I don't like this as much as the other looms I have in my collection, although I do love that color. Um, I think that, that uh, it's a much lighter pen, like the barrel, it's not the same metallic sort of you know, uh, composition as the uh, original models. So it does sit a lot lighter in the hand and the balance is just, for me, just a little less natural um, as well. But this is a medium. And that medium isn't super different at all to um, the fine. You know, it is it is a step up. It is certainly, you know, uh, a wider line, but I don't necessarily think it's, that bigger step up. It is very, very smooth. Super smooth. Um, and lays down a lovely line. It's This pen, uh, nib was, has sort of worked its way in, um, for lack of a better term. Like it's, it's gotten smoother or wetter or something as I've used it over the last year or so. Um, but I think it's a really lovely pen, uh, nonetheless. Despite its faults, I think it is really lovely. But this one, like, that's a step up again. That's a huge difference. Um, like, if you compare uh, that to the fine, which we'll do like, um, you know, right there next to each other. Like, that is a fine to a medium. The difference between, uh, you know, so that to that, huge difference, that to that, a difference but not as sort of noticeable certainly as that um i think this is probably one of my favorite nibs in my entire collection and it's on a 55 dollar pen uh steel nib like really nothing fancy um i believe these nibs are made by yovo perhaps um it's either yovo or bok but made to proprietary um you know measurements and stuff for faber castell but they are just so so smooth wet and juicy it's just a really fabulous nib to write with now you might not be able to see it um in this sample but like to me there just appears to be ever so slightly a bit of difference between the up and down strokes and the side strokes on this pen now you can't see that when you look at the nib like all you might be able to see is vaguely i'm not sure how well it's going to come up like that it is slightly wider than, it's got a slight sort of um, flat face on the nib. So you, it's not a stub, but it certainly has like a slightly stubby quality there, which I love. It's one of the reasons why this pen, this particular pen with this particular nib will, you know, always be a favorite for me. And then we get the broad. This is the last one that I got. Um, and I'm really glad I did because, like, it is super smooth and super juicy. 
um, like crazy wet, um, which I'm not upset about. Um, you know, it lays down one of those perfect sort of patches of ink. Just a really, really special nib. In fact, so this is my favorite in general. Like, love that, love that pen, love that nib. But what I sometimes do is I take the cap of this one and place it on the cap of the broad because I love the olive finish. I think the olive finish is gorgeous. And I prefer this sort of matte metallic uh, body on, on the pen than I do um, the straight up metallic piano version. Um, and with that nib, this pen becomes an absolute favorite. Uh, and of course, then the orange cap can fit nicely on there. Um, so this is a combination I use quite a lot, a bit of a, a, a Faber-Castell loom Franken loom thing, um, but I really love it. So this was the Faber-Castell loom. Um, it's a unique pen, it's a unique design. It's a pen that I really enjoy. Um, and it's that particular nib, that medium nib and that broad nib, I think are really, really wonderful. But even the extra fine of this pen uh, is quite, um, a, f a really really great option if you are looking for a f extra fine or a fine nib um, in that sort of European extra fine fine range not quite Japanese extra fine um, this I think is a really great option and at the price you can play around a bit and the nib units are available separately um, you can also put them they also are the same uh, nibs that go on things like the Ondoro uh, and the Essentio and things like that. Like there's a range of Faber-Castell pens that use these nibs. I think even the Emotion uses this same nib. Um, uh, and so you've all with really unique designs. Um, so check out the Faber-Castell fountain pens. I really, really enjoy them. Uh, the, the nibs are wonderful. And uh, that gives you an example of what you can expect if you get anything from an extra fine to a broad uh, in the Faber-Castell Loom fountain pen range. Hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me. Or you can contact me on any of my videos here uh, or drop me an email which is also listed down below. Um, if you've got products you think I should be looking at or a way, if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.